If you see what we can see, then eventuates for all of us. There's a place that we should be. Come along, come along. Welcome to our boat tour. This boat is a 1943 Harbour Defence motor launch. Well, she was, but in the 70s and 80s, she was converted to a luxury yacht. Unfortunately, she's been left and she's deteriorated over the years. So our mission is to get her back to how she was. So we're going to show you inside today. Please bear in mind, she is a work in progress. <laughs> so at the minute, we are stood on our aft deck or poop deck as I like to call it. <laughs> so as you can see, all of the deck does need replacing. So it's all sheeted up at the moment. Uh, it's structurally okay to walk on in places, um, but it's sheeted over to keep all the rain out. So come inside, come in. This is our aft saloon. At the moment, this is our temporary bedroom when we sleep at the boat. <laughs> <laughs> the couch folds out to a double bed as you can see it is not pretty in here uh the roof last summer we took all the insulation down and all the cladding off the ceiling and we did expose a lot of damaged areas so hopefully it won't look this bad for too long <laughs> so we've got some stairs in the aft saloon which lead up to the flybridge come and have a look So we're looking forward towards the bow at the moment. This did used to have a flybridge. Unfortunately, it was in very, very poor state. So we flattened it last year. And at the moment it's got temporary sheeting on just to keep it watertight. This year, this roof will be getting replaced. Definitely. And these funnels are our ventilation from our engine room. And we've got two davits. And we use that for lifting our dinghy up and also getting supplies on and off the boat. So this is, what do you call it? This is the outside entertaining area, looking aft. At the moment, it currently houses our solar panels, but they will be moved to the front when that roof is complete. And this will have handrails all the way out round the outside. And it'll be a nice area to actually come and sit and chill and enjoy the sun, if we get any. We are in the UK. <laughs> Let's go back downstairs. So back down from the upstairs, We've got the midship saloon. Come on down. Watch the bucket, that's our rainwater collection system. So this is the midship saloon. And in the future, our idea for this room is for it to be an open plan galley and diner. So the plan is we're gonna have a nice big kitchen wrapped all the way around one side of the boat. So, and then we're gonna have a nice dining area around this side so everyone can all be together while someone's cooking and you can still entertain at the same time so from the midship saloon going down the stairs aft we've got the cabins come see so the first room we have on the starboard side was ahead And this room used to be a head and a shower, but it's now just a head. At the moment, because we are in the middle of a restoration, we haven't got any water and stuff like that, and we're sort of in the middle of nowhere. So what we did is we opted for a compost loo. So this is the first cabin on the port side. It's got two beds in, it's got bunks. It's also got storage underneath the bed. We've got a nice storage cupboard at the bottom. Look at all that space. <laughs> and we've also got a big wardrobe in here as well. 
hanging space, floor space, and a shelf. I could hide in here, couldn't I? Someone could lock you in it. <laughs> you have to can feel it. Seriously. <laughs> Come on, so I don't want to pawn the doors. <laughs> I could definitely like you in there. Good. So as you may see on the on the notice in the boat as well, there is radiators all the way around. And we have got a fully working central heating system, which is all ran from diesel and it's kept us really warm this winter, so it's been fantastic. So walking towards the aft end. On our starboard side, we've got another cabin. And this cabin has got loads of storage, a big wardrobe. I'm just coming out of the closet. <laughs> so, in each of the cabins as well, they've got their own sinks. Not got any plumbing in at the moment though, and they'll all be coming out. But it's cool to everyone to have their own sinks before they go to bed and brush their teeth. This is the scariest cabin on the boat. I'm not going in, I'll let you go in. <laughs> Welcome to my cabin. I have a bed and I have um, a pillow. I have storage. I have a TV. And I have a sink as well, as Dad just said, or Mom. We'll keep it in a room. <laughs> so we've got three cabins here, two singles, and one with a bunk in. Come in to the uh, the master suite now. This is our dumping ground. So this is the aft cabin. It's in very, very bad condition. And we've got a lot of woodwork to do in here. And we've also got to replace the whole transom. So I'm going to take over for a little minute. This is all of our steering gear. So it's all this hydraulic based steering system. So I just want to point out all the steering gears here. So eventually we'll have our master bed will be above all the rudder and the steering gear. So yeah, it's going to be a cool room. And at the moment we've got these in basically. Just to basically keep the boat into shape, but... So I think the plan for this room eventually is going to be our cabin, isn't mm. it? Uh, so we're going to have a, a bed there, obviously above the running gear. As much storage in as we can. It'll be nice when we've actually got a cabin to sleep in instead of sleeping cabin. on the yeah, sofa yeah, bed yeah, upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot of work to do in this room. Mm. So just for reference, you are in the aft cabin now. This side is port and this side is starboard. So we're basically there now on the boat. Can you see my hand? Cool. Let's go back up. Right light. So back up in the midship saloon, the next room on this level is the wheelhouse. So this is the wheelhouse. At the moment we're using this room as our makeshift galley. So we have our kettle for our cups too. We've got a George Foreman for baking in the morning. We've got an oven and hob. And we've also got a good sized fridge. <laughs> so power wise on this boat, we are totally off grid. We haven't got any shore power. So we are reliant on solar and wind as well. So we have to manage our power at the moment because we haven't got a big bank of batteries. But in the summer, we don't have a problem with the solar. We've got 700 watt of solar and that provides more than enough. At uh, the beginning of winter, we were really, really starting to struggle. So we fitted a wind generator up on the roof. So that's really helped us through winter because we've got so much clean 
wind where we are. So in our opposite side from our galley, we have got our helm. Is my big wheel. Do you want to take over and tell everyone what the stuff is? Okay. I can show you the cupboards, but this technical stuff's like boop. So basically, as Joe pointed out, it's a nice big ship's wheel, which one day we'll be able to drive this away, and um, it's all it's all hydraulic. Can you so. whistle? <laughs> you can't whistle, can you? I was hoping that you were going to pull some news to some whistle. No, you got to whistle it. I can't whistle. Can you whistle? No. <laughs> can anybody tell who I'm ripping off? <laughs> anyway, so we've got a nice big, big steer wheel, which I love. I can imagine standing there one day, staying away. Oh, we've got a an autopilot. Um, it actually works. And then you can you can nudge nudge the steering there. We've got a search light up on the top. You can control the search light. This is how we control both engines. So it's got twin caterpillars, but we'll see those later. So forwards, reverse. So you can run them independently. So you can actually drive the boat like a tank. So you can don't need a steering wheel. You do. Um, obviously gauges, instruments, sort of very classic instruments which we quite like, got all your RPMs, your temperatures, your boost pressures, your start and stops um, and basically that's mirrored on the starboard side as well so uh, it's good redundancy, um, up high we've got our rudder, rudder position indicator so because it's hydraulic steer and it'll never quite go back the same so you always use use the, the um, the gauge as a reference on where where your rudder's at. So uh, we've got like a walkie-talkie thing. I've actually put it away because we had to tidy up, but you can actually communicate and what's it called? Make announcements outside. Help! <laughs> Get out of the way. Um, yeah, so we're good. Oh, nice big compass. How can we miss the compass? Look at that beauty. Um, we've got the, the sailor radio, which I know nothing about apart from we turned it on and it it started playing. It wasn't radio 2, radio 4. So it does work. <laughs> but we haven't touched it because we know it's like frowned upon to start um, broadcasting, isn't it? We've got a little picture there. Look at our little picture which, which, which someone drew us. How, how amazing is that? And... I love this. Someone made me this after I went to go and tour, um, went down to Portsmouth Historic Dockyard and on Victory, HMS Victory, they had these and I, they wouldn't let me take one. So someone made me one. It's got my initials on. So that lives in the wheelhouse. So this was a chart table until I turned it into a galley. Uh, we've got loads of storage. No charts though, Jen. Don't look at the mess in the cupboards. <laughs> uh, there is loads and loads of storage in the wheelhouse. Uh, this is where you keep your life jackets. And in here too. Not one life jacket in there though. <laughs> So I'm going to apologise about the lighting, guys. Oh, look! There's a life jacket in the there life jacket drawer. That hasn't even got a sticker to say life jacket. It's in the wrong drawer. So the view from the wheelhouse is just amazing. So the field of vision for when you are actually driving your boat is fantastic. Nice and clear, windows all round. Feel sorry for whoever's got to clean the glass all the time. But... We can see our bow straight ahead of us. We can see where we're going. So hopefully when I do eventually drive the boat, I don't crash. Well, you can see what you're just about to crash into. Yeah. The iceberg! <laughs> <laughs> so like, here's, here's the view. So we're basically stood out of the wheel. So you look out, so you can see, as I say, in bright lights.
It's an alien. So in the wheelhouse, we've got a door on either side. So you've got a door to the starboard side and a door to the port side. Um, should we go outside? Be careful. It's very, very dangerous out here. Disclaimer now, if you fall, can't sue me. So this is the only part of the boat where we have some lovely bulwarks. This is our freshwater collection system. So we are finding we were getting a lot of water coming down from the roof and going into the cabins. But now it goes down into the bucket. And when it's full, it drains itself off the side. And since we've done that, it stayed really, really dry in the cabin area. So we are now on the starboard side going forward. When you get to this point in the boat, you have to be good at the limbo. We've got a piece of bracing keeping our bulwarks on. I'm not that, that agile, so I'll just duck under. We basically put, put that on a few weeks back because we had like storm units coming, like 70 mile an hour winds. And what we didn't want is this to fall off. So yeah. So welcome to my bow. There's not much I can say about it. It's just a big broken area. <laughs> It's not broken, it's watertight. Yeah, okay. It's got a big cleat on you. So originally it did have some lockers here and a nice seat and bench. But it was all rotten, so it all got took down. It will be getting replaced further down the line. Because our deck is so rotten, the cleats we had around the outside were held on to like one millimetre ply. So what we did is we made this giant cleat and put it in the centre so all the lines are tied to it and that goes through a really structural point inside the boat. So until we replace the decks and we've got nice reinforced cleat points, that's what's keeping us anchored at the moment. So they are nice size walkways, but we've got no bulwarks or not. And so for, what you have to do is hug Hug your boat so you don't fall in. I think she's being a bit dramatic there, isn't she? Uh, I don't like it! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? I'm scared of falling. So the thing I like about this boat, you can actually walk all the way around the outside. As Gemma said, there's a really wide what? What's it called? Really, really wide path going all the way around the boat, anyway. Pardon? Gangway. Gemma said it's called the gangway. Whatever, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go with gangway. Anyway, there's a really wide gangway which goes all the way around the perimeter of the boat, which is actually two foot wide, so it's quite good. So you can normally walk all the way down there and all the way around, and it's, then it's... And then it's basically the same on the other side. It's just mirrored, so all good. All right, so moving forward now, we're actually in the midship saloon. So we're being quite sort of descriptive where we are because there is a lot of people who don't quite understand the layout of the boat because even some of our... Even some of our... Because even some of our regular viewers are like, I don't know why that is. Do you like... Can you please explain? Anyway, so let's move forward. I'm going to have a look at the bow. Mind your head. Mind your head. So this here is our temporary workshop. It's in temporary, it's going to be here for a good few years I would say. It's got a lot of vice, bench, tools. It's even got a radiator in here as well. So moving forward from the workshop. So originally there was a head here and there was a shower over here. But we basically knocked all that out so we can gain access to 
the hull. So, because we've had to do quite a lot of extensive repairs. As you can tell, it's very, very poorly, but all these, all these ones with the shiny copper things on them are the ones we've replaced. So moving forward again. So we go into our rather large chain locker. And this here is right at the front of the bow at the bow. So originally when she was a HDML, as you can tell, all, all this is basically original World War II. So she was a HDML, there was a hatch which came down here, which I would like to keep the original location for the hatch. But in the 80s, they basically blanked that off and then they put another hatch here. Um, so we'll have to make some decisions when we, um, when, when we actually do the deck um, on where the hatch location is going to go. Why don't we have two? We could have to, we could have to. Because I think when, when the boat's finished, this area here is actually going to be the workshop. We've got to keep the workshop as far forward, forward as we can, and then potentially put another bulkhead in. So if you remember Gemma pointing out earlier on the fore deck, there was a big cleat, wasn't there? So the big cleat is basically around this particular area here. So it's all bolted down. I don't know if we can see where's the bolt. See all these big bolts and stuff like that. So we basically put all these wire ropes and turnbuckles on to where the windows are. So basically, if there's any loading on the cleat, it's it's pulling on the whole hull. That was the plan. Well, that was the plan and it really works. She's been through some rough, rough weather, so. Originally here, there was a shower. Not there anymore. It's not gonna be going back there either, so. Why, why am I telling you that? I don't know, but there was a shower. There's only, there's only a one person shower though. So, as we are, we're watching the bow, so I'm going to point out where the bow is now. The bow is here. You can see that at the end of my finger, picture of Surinda. So, yeah, we're basically right, right at the front there. Okay, where to now? The best room in the boat <sighs> the engine room. Come on, this way. Just before we get to the engine room, actually, this was the original galley. But we basically took all the galley out and then, so we basically now keep all of our odds and sods and bits of sprays and stuff like that. So it makes, makes quite a nice bit of storage. But as you can see, the size of it and being stuck below decks is a bit isolating when you're cooking. So that's why I want to move the galley up to the midship saloon. Yeah, you only had one window or two, two windows, windows to look at. Yeah. A bit gloomy, isn't it? No. Right, so now we're going to the starboard side. So you get presented by a big watertight door. What's right. behind the door? What's behind the watertight door? Hopefully it's not water. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be scary, wouldn't it? Quick, close the door, close the door! <laughs> You need a little window. Right, come so as well, as you can tell, we've been doing lots of work around this area here, but everything you see painted gray is, is at our seal of approval. So we've been through it, we've replaced, and then we've painted it to like encapsulate it now, so. Oh, surprised you didn't paint me gray. You're nowhere near finished. <laughs> <laughs> You've got lots of... <laughs> So now we're actually on the starboard side of the boat. Uh, right above our heads is the wheelhouse. And now we're going into the midship saloon. So this, as Gemma said, this is actually my favorite room, but it's probably the least amount of work done in this room. Um, but yeah, it's the engine room. So Surrinda is actually powered by two Caterpillar 3306s. So these engines were brand new in 1980. I think I've got the receipt for them for. 
Um, absolutely fantastic. I think they've done about 1100 hours each. I think this one's done a bit more than this one, actually. Um, but yeah, amazing start on the button. Sound beautiful, absolutely beautiful. We've had them driving forwards and backwards, and awesome piece of the kit. So, behind the engines, this is a fuel tank. I did measure and calculate how much fuel we can carry. I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's about, it about 4,000 litres in total. Yeah. But so if you imagine, this is, that's how deep it goes and that's how wide it goes and it goes, I think it's about, about that deep going backwards. But then if you look behind Gemma, and we're still going around, there's another fuel tank which stands as tall as me. It's six foot. So we've got six foot worth of fuel. <laughs> six foot, one side of fuel. We haven't. But yeah. So that is a massive tank. Oh, this is one massive tank. But then to the port side of the tank, let's just pop the light on. We've got a junk storage room. So eventually we'll have this room be full of oils and oils and oil filters maybe. <laughs> what and a spanner. And a, and a big spanner. <laughs> so we'll wall down between both engines. Um, it's basically got, this is obviously the exhaust. Obviously, I don't know. It's the exhaust anyway. So it comes up dry, dry and then goes down the other side and then water is introduced to go to the exhaust outside. Um, but as you can tell, big, big, big turbos. The first thing that impressed me when I saw the boat was they're like, that's the turbo. That is a proper turbo. But it's not actually as big as it looks because it's got a big water jacket around the turbo to keep it cool. So imagine the heat radiating from the turbo when you're full power. So it's actually got a big water jacket around it and it keeps the turbo cool. Still a good size turbo. So now this is this this is the port side. So at the moment we've got our inverter charger, and inside here there's all the solar controllers and stuff like that. So all the solar panels you see on the roof, all the electricity comes down the little the little the little pixies come down down on the wires going into the solar charger. It then charges these big batteries, but then it can go back from the big batteries into the inverter. So then the inverter is what gives us our AC electricity. So it's an absolutely amazing system, amazing. I can actually go on my phone and then when I'm away from the boat, you can actually see what sort of electricity you got. You can probably geek out with it. So really, really, really like it. So these are our big AGM batteries. We've got four at the moment. I uh, hope in the future we'll have um, a few, few more batteries, but all of this inverter, and stuff is not staying in the engine room. It's actually going to be going at the aft end of the midship saloon, but we can't do that until we do the roof and stuff like that. So for now, it's going to be staying here. So as Gemma pointed out earlier, we've actually got a full central heating system and that's where this little bad, bad boy comes in. So we've got like an EOGB burner, fantastic piece of kit. And then we've got a big, I can't remember the main of it. I? Perkins. A big Perkins boiler, so that generates as much hot water as you could possibly need basically. But as Joe said, it's all run from the diesel tank. So if you've got diesel, you've potentially got some hot water or heating. So fantastic. So that's the job for this year, is to get some water tanks back in. Because we can make hot water, it would be great to be able to have a shower when we stay over on the boat. So this is our water cylinder. So all the hot water we make gets stored in here and then we can then distribute it around the boat then basically. So on the port side, got confused that my was. Um, so this this is the 24 volt breaker panel. So everything's, it's all really, really good. It was rewired at some point. 
Um, and we've got all the AC breakers. As I said about the inverter and all the Victron stuff and whatever, apart from the, the batteries can stay in the engine room, but we think all of this cupboard here is going to be remodelled in a way, and it's all going to be on this wall here, so our, all of our electricity is going to be up high, out of the water, and out of the dirty air of the engine room. So I hope you like the tour. For everyone new here, if you do want to follow along with our journey on restoring Surinder, subscribe and, yeah. you know, every week, Friday at four o'clock, we release a new episode. Yeah. Don't forget to tell your friends. Thanks for watching. See you Bye. next week. See you later. Bye. So we've got some stairs. Are they called stairs? <laughs> So this is definitely not a Naughty Styles rip-off, is it? No. <laughs> we like Naughty Styles, don't we? Right, shall we go where no one's gone before? No, I'm only messing. Shall we go down the other set of stairs? <laughs> oh, Took a make five quid. <laughs> five p. <laughs> I'll only go for 10p a go.